Okay, so we're gonna move on to number five. And before we do, you probably noticed it looks way lighter in here. Well, I had to stop recording last night uh, and now I'm just picking it back up the next morning. So we are moving right along. Um, so number five, believe the problem is solvable. We've talked about false beliefs and our beliefs can fool us and we can be really, really good at fooling ourselves. And the thing is, sometimes we aren't even aware that the belief is false until we're aware of it. Like, we don't know the thing until we know it. And when we know it, then we can do something about it with that information. But up until now, you may have truly foundationally believed that you will never overcome this, that you will not ever be able to stop binge eating. And you may have dwelled in that place and really felt the emotional charge of the overwhelming despair and sadness, hopelessness, that this is just too big for you to overcome. And you may have resigned yourself to the fact that that is real, that that is true. If you're operating from a place where you're truly, where you're believing, that you won't be able to overcome binge eating, emotional eating, or any other thing that you are doing that is not serving you. Any action that you take to try and mitigate it, um, get around it, quick fix it, will not last. So this is even, I know it's number five and I put it smack in the middle because there are things I wanted to mention before it and there are things that I wanna mention after it, but this is a thing that you will be continuing to work on from the start through the middle and then um, re, per, like re-empowering continually throughout your, the rest of your life. Because right now you may truly be at a place where you're like, I just, I've been doing this for so long. It's been decades. I have never been able to stop in the past and therefore that is my evidence that I won't be able to stop in the future. Therefore, I won't ever be able to solve this problem. And that may be where you are now. And you may understand, okay, I need to break up with this belief, but I don't even know how to. And if I say I can overcome binge eating, it feels like a lie and like, I just, how do I get there? You get there through evidence, you get there through practice, you get there through little life opportunities that may look on the surface like shit's hitting the fan and this is terrible and this is so difficult and this is such, I made such a huge mistake and like I went back and I relapsed. But those little moments, the, the hard ones, the ones that seem bad, and also the little moments where you're having wins, those are the places where you will break this false belief. Um, just because you don't know how to do something, does that mean you will never, ever know how to do it? No, it just means you haven't learned yet. And if you believe that your mindset and your habits and your identity of who you are today are fixed, just because that is who you have historically always been, number one, I would challenge you on that belief because who you are today is not who you've always been. You are a version of yourself today over the experiences of however, you know, of your past. And who you are tomorrow, who you are in a second from now, does not have to be that past version just because that's who you are used to seeing. If you show up and start to believe that you have a growth ability, that you have a growth mindset, that you are capable of learning, that you are capable of making transformations at that foundational level by showing yourself, I can form a new habit. By showing yourself, I can do something that I thought was hard. By showing yourself, I can get myself through a moment where I feel anxious. By showing yourself, I can experience an urge and not act on it. You can learn your new habits, you can change your patterns, and therefore you can change your beliefs. We start with those beliefs. They are the thing that we want to change because they are the core of everything that we do. 
And so we need to continually work on them as we work on the other more surface level stuff as well. Um, mm -mm -mm. Just wanna make sure I don't wanna add anything more to that. No. So sum it up, believe the problem is solvable. Start to get curious and ask yourself questions about what a nice, a question that I like to ask myself is if I trusted myself, how would I see this situation differently? If I believed I was enough, how would I change this? Dif how would I see this situation differently? If I believed that I could do this, if I believed that I had a growth mindset, if I believed that I was capable of learning and growing and expanding and I am not stuck where I am, how would, it, would I see this situation differently? And listen and take and listen to what comes up and continue to ask myself those questions in those situations. Number six, reinforce the behaviors that you want to continue with a reward. When we talked about habits and the four parts to a habit, we start with our cue, then we have our craving, then we have the action, the habit itself, and then we have the reward, the reason why we do something even when we know it's not the best for us long term is because we receive a reward from it we get something that makes us feel good in the moment it serves a need it does in the moment key in the moment but long term not so much and if we continue make um if we continue fulfilling our needs from our survival mechanism from our starvation mode from the part of our brain that's just the primal part and trying to just keep us alive, we will always choose the thing that was is gonna make us survive or um, alleviate the brain's fear that we won't survive in that moment. But it's not thinking about five minutes from now, 10 minutes from now, 10 days, 10 years from now. Our prefrontal cortex, we need to start thinking about that. So looking at our rewards, and this is something we spoke about on one of our group calls, looking at what is the reward that we're getting from the binge eating behavior? What need are we fulfilling? Going back to that first number one. Um, what you wanna start doing is creating an, a reward system for yourself for the times where you stop binging early, where you don't act on a binge urge, where you handle and manage your anxiety in a way that alleviates it and releases it, you want to reinforce every single, even the smallest progressions of behavior that you want to continue doing. And we need to have a freaking amazing reward system. And this is super personal to you. Um, it's something powerful that reinforces your positive behavior. And rewarding yourself physically, mentally each time you stick to a new habit is going to excite you because this reward is now more enticing more exciting than the old reward which was just having the need met with the new reward it's something that we are tr like we truly enjoy doing that really fulfills us that makes us feel that sustained um level of of being of just good of being proud of ourselves. internally we feel good physically we feel good mentally we feel calmer we feel clearer we are proud of ourselves for taking an action step that we know serves our highest level of good um, like an empowering action the reward will be personal and specific to each individual and i am going to encourage and keep encouraging and you're not gonna, or you are probably gonna get tired of hearing me say it until you start to say it for yourself. Find what works for you and use it. So in my story, when I was in my work of breaking up with binge eating, my reward was going to the gym the next morning and not just making it there, but feeling really good walking through those doors, feeling energized in my workout, feeling 
not bloated, feeling um, just like my body felt uh, lighter, I guess I would say. I'm not carrying around that extra water weight. Um, I was moving, I was lifting, I knew that I was walking in and I was the strongest that I could be. That was my reward and that was such an internal reward for me because it was an internal experience and the thought of being able to have a great workout, not just because, but because having that great movement practice would then set my day up to be incredible where I would be energized, I would be engaged, I would feel the most like myself. It was like the reward of being able to be myself and feel my best. That was my reward and my my workout was my tool to get there. So the night before when I would be urged and triggered to binge, my reward for not acting on that urge was getting to go to the gym, was getting to move my body and feeling freaking great about it and then being able to have a day where I felt just physically and mentally my best. That was extremely intrinsic and was very, very, very strong for me. So that was personal. Um, my workout would boost my mood and my energy to feel good all day. I loved this pattern. And when I acted on the binge urge the night before, I would wake up feeling like crap. I would wake up feeling low energy and I would be um, not as strong at the gym. I would feel not as mentally good at the gym. I would feel not as, um, just like my body would feel slower and more lethargic and I didn't like that feeling. And I would go to the gym anyway and I would do the thing anyway. I would do my work and I would do my movement, but I didn't like how that intrinsic feeling felt. And that was my reinforcement, my reward. So um, this is why we take a few minutes to celebrate every time we have a win and give ourselves gratitude at the end of every workout and acknowledge ourselves for showing up to positively reinforce ourselves. Everybody has a different way that they like to be rewarded or feel the most, feel it the most. Um, it could be an affirmation. It could be buying yourself a little something to represent a win to you. It could be maybe spending quality time with yourself or a loved one, a friend for a few minutes. Maybe it's getting your nails done, right? Maybe it's listening to your favorite podcast, which you save specifically for these moments where you're reinforcing a behavior that you want to continue. Um, it could really be anything. I do want to just discourage the use of food as a reward so that we don't start the reward system, you know, so that we don't start rewarding ourselves with food and that can be a whole other um, mountain that we do not want to, or valley rather, that we do not want to slide down into. So something that is going to make you feel fulfilled, something that you truly enjoy, something, even getting outside for a walk and having that be your reward. Um, it could be anything. It could be anything, but I need you to have it be something. And you can try on different things to see what feels good and what is exciting, um, but find what works for you and use it. And the final and seventh step is relating your goal to a higher purpose outside of just you. This goes back to your why in a way, but I also feel it's like an extension of the why because oftentimes we might be have that intrinsic motivation your goal may be really personal. You may know, I need to do this so that I can feel my best and then go out and handle whatever else I need to handle today. And that might be enough for you. And taking it a step further and relating your goal to something bigger than just yourself will make this, I think, just grow more roots and deeper roots. So often, um, relating your goal to, and giving it a meaning outside of yourself because by not using food anymore, by having a healthy relationship with food, your, your goal outside of yourself might be so that you can have this impact on your kids so that they see you have a healthy relationship with food, so that they grow up seeing their mom have this beautiful relationship with food and they in turn model that. 
I know that you don't want to have them have any food um, disrupting behaviors. And so your modeling that for them is powerful. That can be a goal that's bigger than yourself. Um, being healthy and feeling good to take care of your people, your parents, your siblings, your friends, by feeling your best, by um, leading a life where you're free from food and you're able to be there when somebody needs you, God forbid if it's anything, you know, a bad reason, but even if it's just a, hey, I need to talk, like, can you, can you chat on the phone with me? And you are in a place where you can be there for that person because you are feeling healthy and in a good place for yourself. This could be your work, your passion, your something that really moves you, the way that you want to contribute to the world, contribute to your students, um, impact your community by opening up these spaces and you know, getting out, carving out all of this space that has been filled with thoughts of food and diet mentality and I'm not enough and filling the void with, with binging and overeating. Now you're clear to be present and do things that you didn't have space for before. And maybe you'll find inside of that something that really moves you and motivates you and how you can contribute to something bigger than yourself, which in turn gives back to you as a purpose, as, um, as a way for you to show up and be, um, and give your gifts to the world or to your community, like I said, or to something that is important to you. Um, another thing about this is just setting your own environment up where you spend a lot of time that cultivates you to be that person. You are the thermometer. No, I always say that wrong. <laughs> you are the thermostat, not the thermometer. You have the ability to set the temperature of the room because you are setting the temperature of yourself being the thermostat. You are not the thermometer, the thing that reacts right? The thing that reacts to the temperature of the room. So if somebody comes in and their temperature is hot and they set the room as hot and then you go hot and you can't bring yourself back down or vice versa. Somebody comes into your room and they are at a cold setting and your thermometer drops and all of a sudden you find yourself being cold and you can't regulate yourself. You are the thermostat. You set your own temperature and you can regulate yourself as well. So creating that environment around you, literally in your physical environment is powerful. So talk to your people that you trust, talk to the people that you live with, let them in on what you are doing for yourself. And if they can be a part of it in a way that supports you, incredible. But continue to show up for yourself in this way too. I think we all know that changing your habits is about a deeper journey. This isn't just about weight, right? This isn't just about food on the surface. This is something that's deeper and we are doing the work, the deep work to clear that out. It's about wanting to be the best that you can be in this version of yourself that you're showing up today and then doing that again tomorrow and again tomorrow. Your full potential. What even is that? What is your capacity for joy? What's your capacity for connection? You can do this. It's work. I believe in you. And every single moment is a new opportunity to show yourself that you can and will make this happen. I'm going to end the video here. There's really no homework on this video today, but it is a reflective video. There are some things in here in each of the steps that I gave you to think about or come up with an idea. So please review that if you took notes, awesome. And I would love to hear some of the empowering alternatives and reward systems that you are putting in place to help you break this habit. Have an awesome day, you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.